insane houses around the world. When we think of constructing houses, we think of bricks, wood, panels, and straight lines. We think of perfect corners and right angles. That's not the case with architects that made these insanely marvelous and creative buildings. Or should we say, pieces of art. Number 19. My house runneth over. Frank Lloyd Wright is the most famous architect of the 20th century, and perhaps one of the most revered in history. Wright designed iconic buildings such as the Guggenheim and the Imperial Hotel Tokyo. Maybe the most famous home he ever built was his tour de force, Falling Water. Falling Water is located in the woods of the Laurel Highlands of Allegheny Mountains, Pennsylvania. A natural waterfall flows through the house as if Mother Nature herself made it that way. Wright built the house in 1964. The area was initially intended to be a summer camp for employees that worked for the department store owner, Edgar J. Kaufman. Number 18, House of Steel. If you drive along the roads outside of Lubbock, Texas, you will come across the steel house located in Ramson Canyon. At first, you might think it's a retro UFO. Artist and inventor Robert Bruno designed the steel house during the 1970s. Bruno formed the house's walls from pieces of scrap steel that were welded together to make a smoother sloping shape. It measures 2,200 square feet, or 200 square meters, and stands at three stories high. Bruno worked on the house from 1973 until his passing in 2008. He cites artist Antony Gotti as inspiration for Stillhouse's style. Number 17, Under the Shell. Have you ever wanted to feel like a hermit crab? Maybe you should try living inside the famous seashell house located on Isla Mujeres. Architect and painter Eduardo Ocampo first arrived on the island in 1994. Inspired by the piles of seashells on the Caribbean island's beaches, he soon came up with the design for the seashell house. The house is made up of two huge white shells. One is shaped like a crab shell, the other is a conch shell. It comes with a private pool and a shell bed set in every bedroom. This year, Airbnb announced that visitors can now stay in the house for $249 per night. Number 16, the unnatural habitat. The housing complex Habitat 67 offers a new kind of community estate. This complex is located in Montreal, Canada, and was designed by Moshe Safdie, an Israel-Canadian architect. The project started as Safdie's graduate thesis at McGill University. The designs were used to develop a pavilion for the Expo 67, the 1967 World's Fair, a place where workers from all over the world could stay while attending the fair. Architecture experts often associate Habit 67 style with brutalism, a trend that emerged in the mid-20th century and descended from the modernist movement. Safdie says that in actuality, he intended Habitat 67 as a reaction against the movement. Number 15, straight out of the oven. It would be nice if building houses were as easy as mixing materials, sticking it in the oven, and waiting for it to be done. That's not exactly what happened with this next house, but that description is close. Architect Octavio Mendoza built Caso Terracotta and lives in it too. Mendoza baked all the clay that makes up the house. It has been hailed as the biggest piece of pottery in the world. Locals refer to the home as Casa de Flintstone, or Flintstone House. Mendoza began construction in 2000 and spent 14 years of his life building Casa Terracota. Number 14, Home in the Boulders. In Portuguese, Casa do Pinedo means stone house, or house of the rock. Casa do Pinedo can be found between the municipalities of Celarico de Bastro and Fafe in northern Portugal. This small cottage is also considered an architectural monument because of its use of gigantic boulders as its structural material. Casa do Pinedo was built by an engineer who intended the house to serve as a holiday destination. However, it received such popularity that it's become a museum of relics. Number 13, the Fairy Chimneys. You need a hot air balloon to take in just how stunning the high plateau of central Anatolia is. Thankfully, Turkey does offer many balloon rides over Anatolia's old fairy chimneys located in Cappadocia. The fairy chimneys are ancient ruins now, but once upon a time, they served as houses. Volcanic eruptions caused ash to fly down to the ground. Once the ash hardened, it became porous rocks covered in layers of basalt. Time led to erosion of the basalt, forming a fairy chimney. During the Roman period, Christians fled to Cappadocia, who excavated the landscape to build homes right into the rock. Number 12, living in the trees. You're not seeing things. Trees are actually protruding from this building. This building is called Hundert Wasser House, after painter turned architect Friedensreich Hunterwasser. Hundert Wasser began his first architecture models in the 1970s. He made the models for a German TV show and included things like forested roofs and tree tenants, which explains why trees and branches pull out from different parts of the building. Hundert Wasser House can be found in Vienna, Austria. Number 11, luxury on the sea. On the waters in the Solent Strait, near Portsmouth, England, is a sea fort known as Spitbank, 
or Spit Sand Fort. Some people even refer to it as Spit Fort. It is now a luxury hotel, but during the 1800s, its primary purpose was to act as an additional line of defense for ships making it back to England past two other, more far out forts. Construction of Spitbank Fort was completed in 1878. It measures 162 feet or 29.4 meters in diameter and used to be equipped with many weapons. Clarenco LLP bought Spitbank in 2012 and renovated it as a spa hotel. Number 10, the Upside Down House. If you're looking for a unique house, try turning a regular house on its roof. You can find homes like these in the seaside resort of Transenhide, Germany. The Upside Down House of Transenhide was built in 2008 and was the first dwelling like this in Germany. Its creation led to many more topsy-turvy edifices like this to be developed in other parts of the country. On the exterior of the Transenhide House, you can see a bench on the roof and an attic window on the ground floor. When you step inside, all the typical furniture like couches, lamps, and paintings are all inverted and hang from the ceiling. Number 9. Your Own Hobbiton Lord of the Rings fans, rejoice! Hobbit houses are no longer restricted to the set of Hobbiton in New Zealand. Now you can find people constructing these mini dwellings all over the world. Aside from Kiwiland, there are also Hobbit-like houses in places like Wales and Devon, England. Tenby, Pembrokeshire, is home to luxury glamping pods that resemble Hobbiton cottages. You can find a single house in the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. What many of these houses have in common is not their inspiration from Tolkien, but also the eco-friendly nature of the construction materials and sustainability of the house operations, like plumbing and power. Number 8. The Tiny House Movement Talk of small houses and sustainability leads us to our next topic, the tiny house movement. This trend is similar to Hobbiton houses, but with a less Tolkien fan foundation. The tiny house movement has become prominent in both the architectural and social realms. It is the advocation of living in small homes which are usually no more than 400 square feet or 37.16 square meters. The point of shrinking the size of your place is to promote a more financially prudent and environmentally friendly space. It also rejects a consumerism-driven mindset, discouraging people from acquiring more and more goods. Number 7. Inside the Beach Boxes on the beach of Brighton, Australia, visitors will find a line of colorful beach huts known as Melbourne's Dendy Street Beach Boxes. The little cabins have been around since the 1860s as a way to preserve the dignity of swimmers. Remember, it was the Victorian era. You could barely show an ankle or a shoulder without setting off whispers. The boxes may appear like flimsy shelters, but they've survived nearly 200 years of heavy storms. Number 6. The Mushroom House Walk right into a fairy tale realm in the Tove Jansen Akabono Children's Forest Park. Located in Saitama, Japan, just a bit north of Tokyo, the children's park is filled with cute buildings that make you feel like a character in a lighthearted fantasy. The park's popular feature is the Mushroom House, which is the first thing visitors see when they enter the area. Park visitors can enter the house and take a look at the old European-style kitchen and living room. During the winter holidays, the park lights up the fireplace to keep people warm and complete that cozy feeling. Number 5. The Pineapple Palace where do you expect a pineapple palace would be? Your first thought most likely wasn't Scotland, but that's where you'll find Dunmore Pineapple. Many people consider it the most bizarre building in Scotland. It is located in Dunmore Park and served as the ancestral home for the Earls of Dunmore. The estate includes a country mansion, two walled gardens, and lots of lands. On the mansion's ground floor is a hothouse, which was used for growing pineapples. Where did this pineapple fascination come from? Europeans were not introduced to pineapples until Christopher Columbus found them in the Caribbean in 1493. For the next couple of centuries, pineapples were a delicacy in Europe. Number 4. Fred and Ginger The dancing house is also called Fred and Ginger because the front of the National Netherlanden building twists and turns, though it's dancing. It stands out amongst the more classic 18th and 19th century buildings on the street in Prague. This style features buildings that appear to have a fragmentation, such as the twist of the dancing house. Number 3. Welcome to Earthship Earthship is the name of the Solar Earth Shelter brand. It utilizes upcycled and natural materials as a way to promote an eco-friendly lifestyle. American architect Michael Reynolds started the Earthship as a way to adhere to radically sustainable living. This idea centers on six basic principles, thermosolar heating and cooling, solar and wind electricity, self-contained sewage treatment, natural and recycled materials, water harvesting, and internal food production. You can find an Earthship community in Teos, New Mexico, Reynolds' home state. There, the housing appears futuristic, yet at the same time blend into the desert landscape. Number two, pods on the sea. For anyone traveling to the southern region of Caxambas, you can peer out from the shore and you can see a handful of dome houses out on the water. A few decades ago, these concrete igloos used to be a part of the shore. Over the years, the sea has slowly reclaimed the odds, and now they appear as if they are floating. These igloos are known as the Cape Romano Dome House, consisting of four dome-shaped modules on stilts. 
The late Bob Lee, who was a retired oil producing, spent 1978 to 1979 searching for land on Cape Romano to build a vacation home. Construction on the dome house began in 1980. It measured 2,400 square feet, or 223 square meters, and had three bedrooms and bathrooms. Before we reveal number one, we have a question to ask. If you could put together your dream home, what would it have? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Number one, this is a madhouse. Nothing is more out of this world and surreal than the Hang Na Guest House in Dalit, Vietnam. It's better known as the Crazy House, created from the mind of architect Dang Viet Na. People describe it as something that bloomed out of a fairy tale. The exterior of the edifice resembles a large, misshapen tree. The overall architecture consists of twisting, sloping, and curved shapes, like something out of an incomprehensible dream. Gaudi, Dolly, and Disney have all influenced the look of this crazy house. Oh! <laughs>